man up in here. Yeah, there he is. S. Dot. What's up, my brother? We're good. Man. Hey, how you doing? I'm good, man. How you feeling? Mm. I'm actually feeling amazing. Um, sitting here at my Steinway and Sons piano. Okay. My baby boy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We have, uh, you know, in an environment, in the right environment. You know what I'm saying? I see you. I see you, man. What? Man, just... I'm great, bro. I'm blessed, man. Welcome to the Making Place Convo. So, um, you know, shout out to my man, Talk to Pops. We came up with this concept of plays that people have been making, you know, just since everything is going kind of crazy right now, since the pandemic started and everything like that. And you, my brother, have been making plays for a very long time, um, you know, especially especially recently and whatnot. So I'm glad that you and your family are doing good. So excuse, I'm going to have to say this, excuse everybody that's on there right now. I'm going to get on my soapbox for a little bit. That's cool? Okay, talk that shit, dog. All right, I'm going to talk, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna talk my junk a little bit. We keep it honest. We keep it honest. Keep I it was honest. thinking about, like, you know, we've known each other for 12 years. That's right. And, Thinking about like when um, when we first met, I think it was Wingo from Jagged Edge that introduced us because I had just gotten on radio. I was the newest, youngest mixer at the station at the time. So I was still trying to like figure stuff out, network, meet a lot of people. And um, some people were receptive, but I ain't gonna lie, I got a lot of hate too. Mm -hmm. But you know, when Wingo introduced us, you was real cool. You showed me a lot of love, man. You was real receptive to me. And you was already established. Like, by that time, you had already written, yeah, goodies, grill, soldier, bring me along, get me body. So, and the list goes on. So, you didn't really have to deal with me if you didn't want to, but you did. And um, I always appreciate that. And any anytime I called you, anything, you always picked up the phone. And I, I, I went back to my, my YouTube page, and I don't know if you remember this, but remember our birthday party in 2009? You yeah. performed, and we was in the hood spot. We was in the Pearl Beach Storm Bar in yeah. Southwest Atlanta. You pulled up and performed. It was crazy, man. So I just wanted to put that out there and say thank you for, for your brotherhood and your friendship throughout all the years. Man, well, listen, you, you know what's beautiful about my life is that I've built some amazing relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm I'm just so thankful and appreciative of, of of those moments, um, and and you know, a lot of times when I talk, um, I think sometimes people don't really understand just how appreciative and hum humble I am about every little piece of detail of my life. Right. So when you and I met, you know, um, I don't know, man. I I'm a I'm a I'm a Pisces. Some people think I'm an Aries, but I'm actually a Pisces. Yeah. Um, and. I'm the type of person who really delve into spirituality. Um, I'm very humble. My mother, um, God rest my mother's soul. But you know what people don't know, and I'm, I'm gonna get back to the point. Is the point that I'm no, making. no, talk, talk, talk. Um, this is a combo, man. This ain't you know, this ain't no regular interview, man. We know each other for a long time, so talk your stuff. Yeah, man. So a lot of times when I close my eyes, sometimes people be like, "Yo, you were closing your eyes." When I close my eyes, I feel. You know what I'm saying? I'm a fish. So with Pisces, we're very, very emotional people. We're very, um, but we're very, we're, we're, we're specially intuitive, specially intuitive, like not normally intuitive, mm -hmm. we're specially intuitive. That, that means we have a sense, you know how a fish swims and you notice a, a fish when they're swimming, they just quickly go into another direction. Right. That's because they've already felt the vibrations of what's coming towards them. Right, and mm. I, I um, that is I, that's my true element of feeling, and when I can feel um, a certain vibration, uh, whether it's love or hate, I feel it mm. instantly. When I met you, it was it was an amazing um, vibration. It was a good vibration. It was a humble vibration, and. From that moment, man, I mean, you know, I always felt like you were very, and you know what? It was an honest vibration. You yeah, very yeah. Honest. You're very honest. I appreciate that, man. Even when you can't, listen, man, I know you for a long time. Yeah. Even if you can't say yes, you 
are still trying to be honest. Yeah. Um, and that's the vibration I get. And, you know, sometimes, um, you know, I, I'm a creative. With my creations, with my, um, with my talent, I've been able to be very honest with myself. Just be honest with myself. Um, and so when I meet people that are great, shout out to my man, Swiss B. Yeah. Glenn, um, man, um, Mary J. Blige. I talked to Ken dude uh, yesterday, for yesterday on my live. Um, even though Kendu and and Mary are uh divorced, um Kendu mm. really still loves Mary. Um mm. and I think Mary uh and I think Mary still loves Kendu. I just they just couldn't understand how to get along and how to be together. And that's not I'm not getting in that that, that <laughs> moment. Um, but I'm saying that to say in all humbleness and life yeah. um, experience over the last uh, 25 days have been enormously incredible in reference to just, you know, dealing with people, dealing with people from a perspective of like understanding and, and, and relationships and just, you know, just growing. Um, and I can say one thing about you, J1, is that, man, you came in the game uh, from a perspective. You came at a, uh, you, man, you followed up some some interesting people. Um, and you came in a position and, you know, shit, man, you, you, you came in and you filled big shoes. Appreciate it, man. So, man, I, you know, I just, I've always respected you and appreciated you, um, just as a human being. And, you know, a lot of times, man, I deal with people straight from a human side first. Yeah. You know, I, I don't, I never judge a person from their, um, their title, what they can do for me. I just never looked at people that way. Um. Cause I, I, you know, God let God. Everything's in God's hand, in my, in my perspective. So creating music, dog, is just an outlet of me just loving life and appreciating life, dog. Yeah, facts, man, facts. If you just tuning in, talking about brother, my guy, Sean Garrett, yeah. making moves combo. Yeah. And um, so what, what, what things were you working on like before the pandemic really started? I mean, we had talked slightly about it beforehand, but. You were you were getting ready to, to put some things in motion. Yeah, shit is popping, dog. Um, my new album is 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 um is in full fucking effect, you know. And I and I talk violent, you know. what I mean, I talk that. <laughs> shit. I, mean, I talk that shit, man. I have fun. Uh, I'm 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 a very uh, passionate person. I'm a very loving person. I'm a very excitable, excitable person. Um, shout out to my nigga Lil John and motherfucking um, T Pain last night. Oh my night, god! Who had an incredible, an incredible. Um, shout out to Yanni. Yanni just chimed in. Uh, one of my brothers, who's a, a producer uh, that works with uh, uh, very exclusively with um, uh, one of the most incredible uh, icons. Mm -hmm. Of our generation, I, I, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll fill you in with that. He just, <laughs> in, um, I, he just shined in, but um, I was gonna say, look, man, I've been working on my album, um, sh Tank, um, just body the record. Mm, shout out to Tank. Um, I got some really cool ass. Uh, what's up, Yanni? I see you chiming in. Um, I, 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 um, I got some really cool collaborations on my album. Um, I got a collaboration with um, World. I don't know who you. I don't know if you guys know who World is, but World is has the number one album in Africa right now. Oh wow! Mm. I, I got some really cool ass collaborations on my album, but that was the one thing that I've been working on um, mm. extensively. I've been working with uh, this one kid named Holland Start. Mm. Uh, he signed to uh, Wolfpack. Wolfpack is the label that house Lil Baby. Yep, and uh, they got Renny Rucci. Shout out to Wolfpack. Renny Rucci, who, who you were actually on. Um, yep, the other day with, yep. Yes, yes. Um, Renny Hart. Renny she, Hart. She tough. She tough. She family. She family. Um, we've already touched. Um, Man, her fuck around, you know what I'm saying? That's my that's my dog. She gets busy. Mm -hmm. um, I've been working on a lot of interesting new projects uh, that you know, are on the beaten path, um, and some of them are off the beaten path. Um, I just, I just uh, team with a new management company. Um, my man Max Goose is my manager now. 
um, and he manages Saweetie. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, and we're putting together an incredible... Um, um, I have a few other people who I fuck with as well, but 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 he's the he's gonna be the spearhead of my new branding, um, uh, touring, mm -hmm. um, um, television, um, just we're, we're putting together uh, uh, you know my new book deal. Yeah, um, just a lot of exciting moments. It definitely is. And, and I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like this, this, this fucking pandemic wind up. You know, our purpose of the pandemic is to turn this shit into a positive scenario. Yeah. Uh, and this shit turned into it went from um, a negative to a positive, which is which is the story of my life, dog. I'm I'm, I'm definitely yeah. a very positive minded person, and um, I, I man, I've always been an underdog. Always mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in my heart because I feel like everybody don't love you on site, right? You know what I'm uh, just like you experience. Yeah, when you you would think when you get a new job, new position, you know people would be happy for you. Well, motherfuckers ain't happy for you, guys. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Niggas ain't yeah. happy for you to be successful. Niggas ain't happy for you to be positively um, embraced. Right? You no, know, motherfuckers just just some people are just assholes you know and I, I i'm not speaking negatively it's a positive vibe but it's just that some people don't want you to win dog you know what i mean i had to learn that the hard way yeah i learned that being like i'm gonna be honest with you i was scared of social media you know really? I wasn't really, yeah man i wasn't really like i wasn't really fucking with the idea of having to broadcast everything i do having mm -hmm. to say Oh, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing this, and everything I do, I had to put the shit on, on live. Like that shit was frustrating for me. Yeah. So it's like I don't. I don't. I've never been that type of nigga. So, so, so you. That, that's that's funny because it's like, how did last week come along? Because like you know, you guys set the tone for for these versus battles, and when you said Swiss approached you about it, right? Yeah. I mean, Swizzy. First of all. Um, shout out to Swiss Beats. Swiss Beats is one of my mentors. Mm, I didn't know that. Swiss Beats was one of the first super producers that ever embraced me. Um, my biggest records I started out with doing um, was Swiss Beats. Um, you know, I don't know if people remember my first. Okay, and shout out to Lil John as well. Um, but Lil John was the first produce, super producer that I actually did a record with. But the first produce, super producer that ever embraced me and, like, loved me and, like, taught me was Swiss Beats. Mm. Um, and the good thing about what I was speaking to you about earlier, I, I speak a lot of, um, I speak a lot of truth. And a lot of, if you listen to what I'm saying, a lot, you'll learn a lot because I only teach what people taught me. And Swiss Beats was somebody who was very, very instrumental in the beginning of my career, like from teaching me art, teaching me um, the game. Like, you know, Swizzy was a baby coming in this game. And I was very fortunate to, 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 to get to know him. And uh, it's no surprise that he's extremely successful. It's no surprise that he's one of the most um, successful producers of our generation and it's no it's no um it's not a surprise that we are in the middle of a pandemic and he and Timberland who were Timberland who is a, another one of my great friends and somebody who I really love and respect and we do magic together um are doing this groundbreaking exciting uh, like what other word could I fucking use? Like <laughs> epic, <laughs> yeah. iconic. This ain't no surprise, yeah. dog. Because, because these are people who are just truly just great people in their heart, right, and right. love the culture. We love the culture, like we love what we do. That's what people are just now starting to understand. Billboard, we ran. The, we ran look at this shit. <laughs> <laughs> he giving us a tour, my nigga. Look at that, dog. 
You know, to get on the cover of Billboard, you got to be fucking magnificent. Look at that, dog. Yeah. That's just one of the plaques, 70 million albums sold worldwide. But these are the number ones. And I, and I was only saying that to say, and this is an amazing, beautiful plaque. These are all my, my number one records, dog. You know, fire. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, dig a hole. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's from the big homie. You know, get me body. Give me that. You know what I'm saying? Give me that remix. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Grill. You know what I mean? Like, shit. That shit, right? Um, You know what I'm saying? Plaques on plaques. You know what I mean? Decked out. Big shit. Big body. You know what I mean? I'm History talk, right there. I'm going to talk that shit because it's a celebration, dog. Talk, talk it. Shout, shout the cough talk in the building. You, you know what I Cough talk. I see you. What's up, visitors? You know, it's my <laughs> seven page, this is my seven page, page spread. That was in Billboard. You feel me? You know, I heard Sean doing demos, and I was immediately taken. He was amazing. Antonio L.A. Reed. Mm. You understand? Um, bringing out the props and respect to the pen. Congratulations from all of us at RCA Music Group. You understand what I'm saying? Like, look at this shit right here. Sean Garrett, the pants. Thanks for inking those hits. And here's the many more congratulations from you and Zamba Label. You know what I'm saying? This is... Iconic moments, dog. Yeah, I could go on and on and on, but you know, I, I just you know, his name is Sean Garrett, but none other than Jay Z. Um, he's simply the pen. Um, these are moments in your life. Yeah, this is this is you know, there's a pandemic going on, but really, dog, you know, it's a celebration going on. It, it, it's crazy because I was I was thinking the same thing, man. I was just reflecting on everything that's been going on, and a lot of times we appreciate like our icons or people that have contributed to the culture when they're gone. But you know, this time has forced everybody to kind of pause, and with the creativity that's come out with people like Swiss Beats and Timberland and, and everybody else, you know, we're seeing we're being reminded of the contributions that you and the Dream did of Lil Jon and T-Pain, and then, you know, uh, Jermaine Dupree doing a, 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 that 404 set yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Man. And a lot of those songs we might not hear on a regular basis, but this time is really making us appreciate folks like yourself and just everybody that's, that's, that's made a, a contribution to the culture, man. So, like you said, you know, it, it is a lot of things that we wish could be different right now. But we do have to try to make the most of it and look at the positive side. They won. I mean, even the things that you uh, <laughs> got a little, got a little sneezy. No, uh -oh. um, be careful, man. Uh, no, 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 that, that, hey, man. What, 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 what has happened in life ha and and has gotten people off the mere fact that normalcy is still real, That's right? It. Yeah. So it's still normal. It's still normal to sneeze. Still normal to sneeze as I get it fucked up, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, I will say this, man. Um, what has been beautiful is the fact that, you know, we are now embracing the idea of, like, just being normal. Mm -hmm. Sitting in the house, talking to your loved ones. My, my little brother called me yesterday. And man, it made me so happy. I sent him some herbs that I want him, that I want him. Let me show you something. Let me take you in my kitchen. We, we, get, the, we get the tour, y'all. Yeah, man. This is an experience. So for those of you guys who don't know about this, okay, I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, life. This is sea moss and bladder rack. Just look wow. it up. I ain't, I'm not going to get too deep. Um, into what I'm uh, speaking on. Okay, this is called Maya. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are herbs. Um, this right here, the ingredients, can you read it? I can't see, it's a little blurry. Okay, this is called Artem Lapa. And now, it, where's that from? And Sanko. And Sassafran. Basically, these are herbs that the late, great Dr. Simos, mm -hmm. 
um, Dr. Sebi is someone who I completely um, sell cleanse here. Yeah. I, I brought you in here to see this for a reason. Um, this is my Viento one, and I, I don't mean to get too deep into this, but what I, what I was saying is that I, I think that, you know, from a perspective of, like, people getting more healthy, learning about taking care of yourself, mm. some of those herbs are really life-changing. Where you get them from? Um, you can you can go to this 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 place here, um, and um, I don't really like to. This is called Next Generation, right? This okay. place called Next Generation. It's a herbal. It's herbal products. Um, you know, I, I don't want to go get too political, but Dr. CB is someone who I really really believe in, and he cured a lot of diseases. Yeah. yeah. Many diseases that 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 took out a lot of people, um, and when you start thinking about life, when you start thinking about um, health, when you start thinking about um, survival, right, which is the time that we're in right now, this is why I'm so happy. This is why I'm so I'm celebrating, dog. Celebrating because life is short, man. I mean, these people are dying, dog. Yeah, and hey, you know, I appreciate you bringing me on. I really do appreciate. I appreciate everything. you taking the time. Yeah, man. You know, and I, I just wanted to kind of speak on my life a little bit and give you a little bit of insight of what's going on with me, dog. It's just I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating. I'm taking everything for. I'm taking everything seriously, but I'm not being overly like. You know, I'm just not being so serious that I'm not enjoying every moment of what's going on in life right now, dog. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You you genuinely genuinely look like you were having fun last week during that battle. You look focused. You had the you had the eye of the tiger, but you look like you was having so much fun with it. And yeah. I, I haven't seen you in that space in a very long time. I, probably when you and Mario were running around uh performing together and stuff, that's the last time I really seen you just like genuinely having a good, good time. Yeah, man, like, I'm I'm happy as hell right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm back on that shit. Mm -hmm. I'm back on that celebration. Um, I'm back on that celebration time. I'm back on that, you know what I'm saying, just being myself and enjoying life and, um, you know what I mean, not really giving a fuck about um, negativity. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of negative-ass people out here in this world, dog, who don't enjoy themselves. They don't enjoy life just naturally, right? <laughs> And I and you can try your best to encourage happiness, but some people just ain't gonna be happy, dog. That's they, facts. They they they're not gonna enjoy anything that you're saying to them. They're not gonna take a perspective of positivity. They're just not gonna do it. So you gotta like, you know, shit. You just gotta live your life, man, and be and be exciting. Be um be happy. Um, get out here, man, and spread joy. Right. Yeah. Compete. Um, yeah, I, I definitely was trying to take motherfucking dream heads, heads <laughs> because 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 I'm I'm one of the best songwriter producers of my generation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We changed this shit, man. Um, shout out to my to my dog, um, Lil John. Shout out to my dog T Pain. Man, those guys are so fucking incredible. Shout out to my man John T Austin. Shout out to Neo. Um, shout out to a lot of the generals that were put on the stage um, a couple couple days ago, a couple weeks ago. You know, shout out to Timberland, shout out to Swiss Beast. This was so important for our culture to to really allow people to have the opportunity to enjoy this moment yeah. and celebrate, you know what I mean? Celebrate the end. Shout out to some of the new and upcoming um, uh, 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 greats like uh, Eric Bellinger. You know what I'm saying? People gonna celebrate Eric Bellinger later. Super talented. Yeah, super talented. Shout out to Tank. Shout yeah. out to um I mean Tank's a pioneer. Tank's one of those artists who kept R and B alive. Yeah. In the downtime. Man, uh let me give you a prime example, dog. I was I signed this artist named Avery Wilson. I remember. Um and you know it didn't I, you know i stopped working with avery for 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 some other reasons um uh, uh, i didn't like some of the things that was going on but i will say that um true talent true talent 
Yeah, he was. Amazing talent. And it was a hard push for me, dog. Shout out to my man, who I love. His birthday was yesterday. Uh, shout out to the great Clive Davis. Yes. To the great Clive Davis. One of the greatest, um, one of the greatest chairmen, uh, music pioneers of this life. Yeah. Uh, he gave me an opportunity. He gave me an opportunity. Uh, shout out to Doug Davis. Mm. One of the greats. Do you understand? Yeah. Shout out to Peter Edge. Shout out to all the great people at Sony Music um, who gave me an opportunity to to birth a new uh, superstar. Uh, but but you know what? The world wasn't ready for R&B. Mm. At that time, it was a fight, man. So, so do you think now is is a good time to like try something like that again because a lot of it sounds like timing because i remember you introducing us and and dude was talented he even sang in the office and everything like that but do you think now is a good time to like try that sort of project or work with some sort of artist like that again music is about timing um passion man you gotta have undying you gotta have a, a music's not just being talented though. You know what I'm saying? Music is about being fearless. Music is about groundbreaking moments. Um, when you when you factor in when you factor in uh, social media, social media is a great platform. Um, a great platform is necessary when it comes to um, breaking acts, breaking music. Um, what was beautiful about my opportunity, right? Um, man, somebody just said something that was so profound. Uh, Sean, that red looks amazing on you. <laughs> oh, I, I, I was reading that wrong. I thought God, I thought he said God is your color. Um, but see how my vibrations, dog, are so, my vibrations, man, are so godly. Um, but I will say, you you have to like I'm not I'm not trying to be a philosopher dog but I'm I'm saying you gotta really understand how to dial into um your your moment. Mm. See? Jay, you came along dog at a time man where you saw what the fuck was going on dog. There's so many different um there's so many different elements yeah. to to the success to what I call success to what everybody else thought was success versus what you realized what success was. Mm. Do you know, you agree? Yeah, man. I mean, it was it definitely was an interesting time because you know R and B was still trying to find like a lane about twelve years ago, and then on top of that, you had a lot of urban labels that were struggling because streaming was just starting to to come along, but nobody had figured it out. Yeah. Nobody knew how to monetize it, and we were losing money. Yeah, which was the biggest thing. And to my point, like to a lot of urban black people fuck it let me let me just say it to black fucking people black people wake the fuck up wake the fuck up cuz where the fuck y'all been at where the fuck y'all motherfuckers been i'm gonna say it dog where the fuck y'all been at why you say that though let me tell you dog because it's like it's a struggle out here being a fucking artist yeah it's a struggle out here man trying to be a creative it and is. We don't man. make money, bro. We don't make money unless motherfucker cut a check. Mm. We don't. We don't make money like when you go when you when the nigga go up to the motherfucking radio stations, dog, to ask a nigga to play your record, nigga. That's for free. <laughs> nigga just going up there, nigga, really begging. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, dog, believe in what I'm on. Believe yeah. in what I do, right? Now, everything is taken within. You know, everything's taken with the uh, grain of salt. So you, you, you can't, you can't misunderstand it or miss, you know, don't misunderstand what's going on, but man, it, you know, it's, 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 it's a challenge. Dog's work. It's work, man. It's like, there's a lot of starving artists out here, dog. There's a yeah, lot of man. artists out here, man, really trying to get it together, really trying to make it. Um, and we need, we need the support of our community. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, are, that's facts. You are a great support mechanism 
these platforms are, are important, dog. Um, TikTok, uh, Pandora. Appreciate that. Spotify. Yeah. Pandora is important. And you know what's so crazy about Pandora? Cats don't even know. They don't even know what you guys are bringing to the game. They don't know what y'all add to the game. They don't no. even know. They don't even know what y'all game is. <laughs> they, they don't even know what y'all game is. Well, conversations like this help us, you know. So that's that's one of the things that I've been trying to do, and that's why when I got the position, I told them I wanted to be located in Atlanta, um, because of course, this is where the culture is. This is where the creatives uh, live. This is where people like you and, and Dream and JD and and Jazzy Faye are creating these hits that sometimes get overlooked. And I, I always love New York because that's where I'm from. But, you know, New York and L.A. is where the checks are getting cut. But this is where a lot of the creativity is happening. So I felt like, but we lack the knowledge. I, so, said, I, said, I, said, I said to my girl earlier, I said as much as, and, and I, I'm going to tell you, dog, I spent, I spent a whole summer in, in Harlem. My hometown. Yeah, shout out to my man. Oh man, that's crazy. Shout out to your city. Yeah, shout yeah, yeah. To, shout out to your town. Shout out to where you're from. But um, shout out to my nigga, uh, Ryan Leslie. Oh. Ryan, Ryan Leslie introduced me to Harlem. Yeah, another very talented guy. Wildly enough, Harlem is a great energy mm -hmm. look at urban community. Yes. But, but I'll tell you something. I said, to my girlfriend earlier, I said, yo, people come to Atlanta and they learn how to how to be, they learn how to be a, a black successful person. Mm. That's true, man. People come to Atlanta and they learn urban culture. I said to one of my young, um, one of the young artists that I'm working with, this kid named Holland Star today, I said, yo, have you ever been down to Ebenezer Baptist Church? Mm. I said, have you ever been to the Martin Luther King Memorial? Facts. You know, what you, you know what he said? What he said? No. The AUC. Yeah. You know where he's from? Where is he from? He's from Oklahoma, cuz. Mm. And I said to him, I said, why are you blowing it? You blowing it. You the opportunity for you to really get enriched, right? And learn, because the one thing about Atlanta that people don't, that people misunderstand is that, man, our mothers, shout out to CeeLo. I just, CeeLo is a, um, CeeLo and Goody Mob, an outcast. They're spiritual beings, dog. They're humans. But they spiritual beings. Like those guys are culturally a inspiration to a generation of amazing people, right? Yeah. I'm talking about kids, man, from the AUC. I'm talking about kids, man, you know, who who just grew up at a time of just like like there was a certain generation, like TI's generation, like that generation grew up listening. They were listening. Yeah. That generation was listening. Um, not seriously, no, no, no bullshit. They, they, they were listening. Like, um, T.I. They carried the torch. Yeah, they did carry the torch. And they, the they, 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 carried, they carried the torch, and they, they birthed, you know, the explosion of Atlanta. You remember, like, in the early 2000s and stuff, that's when, like, Atlanta just got that rocket on its back. It took off. And it hasn't looked back since. But that's when you had your tips and, your, and, and Jeezy's was running around, were running around with, with Meech and all that. And it was just. I'm going to be honest, dog, even before that, though. Let me tell yeah. you, because that's like the after. Yeah, that's the after effects. I'm saying, I'm going to speak a little bit even further. I remember as a kid, dog, um, my brother and, like, Tip, I'm talking about Tip. What? Because Tip came out what? Like what? What? Two thousand one? About two thousand one, two thousand two. Man, if you go listen to that first motherfucking Ti album, when you go listen to that Goody, I'm talking about that 
that that early that early early I'm talking about the early Goody Mob shit. Mm. Um, that that really uh, the Outcast first album. Um, I'm talking about Jermaine Dupri. I'm talking about Dallas Austin. I'm talking about Dungeon Family. I'm, I mean, those people birthed a generation of amazing artists. Yeah. You know, seriously, dog, and I'm not just really here sitting here like talking. Um, I'm not sitting here just talking shit, dog. I'm just sitting here saying like, man, these people really birthed some shit. Yeah, everybody, everybody, man, everybody is, and I mean, you know, L.A. Reid, you know, um, I got to say, man, um, um, Babyface, man, what they was doing with LaFace, these, uh, it's just, it, they really birthed up some amazing talent. And me, me and Dream are from that. Yeah. And we, and, oh, um, what was the other, uh, like, there's a few other people, dog. John T. Austin. Mm. I'm talking about. B. Cox. B. Cox. Brian Michael Cox. Brian Michael Cox is a solid, amazing, super talented person, dog, who is very humble. Like, he just yep. works. Yep. And he, and, he, and he still likes to get out there. Before everything got shut down, he had one of the hottest Wednesday night spots. The R&B Wednesdays that he was doing yeah. was fire. What, what were you speaking of? The one that him and Keith does? Keith Thomas? Um, oh, oh, at Medusa. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Like, that shit is, like, yeah, man. Like, 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 that shit is litty. Like, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. And I was only speaking of that just to say that, you know, when people come to Atlanta and, and enjoy the elements, like, you came here and I'm, I'm sure you, 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 you were, you were, you were wide open arms and you enjoyed the, the, the learning perspective of what Atlanta, Atlanta had to offer. And I think it probably really helped your life. I mean, I tell people all the time, coming down here and going to school in the ABC, where you just like get surrounded by so many cultures and so many regions and stuff. Uh oh, you lost you good, you good. If you just tuned in, we got my man Sean Garrett up in here. My name is J1, head of hip hop. Shout out to everybody checking in. DJ Infamous. Uh, so sorry, I already kid up in here. Yo, 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 DJ Infamous on here. Yeah, Infamous checked in. So I already kid was up in here. Uh, Two Live Bree. Shout out to Mother Rose. Wow. Now you got you got you got some you got some people checking in, bro. Wow. Oh, my, my man Ron Stu was good. Wow. But yeah, Ron. man, I, I honestly, like, it It would be hard for me to do what I'm doing now as far as, like, curating hip-hop for yeah. people who are, if I didn't come down here and have those experiences and engage with not only people from the South, but people from, from Texas, from the Midwest, from the West Coast, and understanding their music. Because, like, again, being from, from, from Harlem and from New York, a lot of times we were in a bubble when it came to music, when I came down here. So it's like, you know about New York music and L.A. music, that's about it. But when you get got down here and they were putting me on the 3-6 Mafia and Project Pat and the Texas dudes was putting me on the Swisher House and Paul Wall, it just opened up my brain to all this type of music. And now it's a beautiful thing with streaming that, like, you have kids – from, who will grow up in New York, but they, they don't have a traditional New York sound. Can, can, I, can I say something that's really interesting? I grew up, I'm from Atlanta. Yeah. From Camelton Road. But man, I grew up in Germany. I grew up in that's Germany. Right. And I was able to adventure out across the world and get a chance to see all of this different music abroad. That's why I was able to do some of these crazy ass records um, that changed the world because I was very, I was influenced by something that was different from the community that I grew up in. And I was able to learn. That's, that was my whole point of saying what I said when it came to growing, going to Harlem. Mm -hmm. I, I was there a whole fucking summer. And yo, I really do love Ryan Leslie for allowing me the opportunity. This is when he was dating 
Um, what's that girl's name that ended up dating um, Diddy? Who? Um, hmm? Who you talking about? Who's the girl you used to date Diddy? I'm forgetting. Um, Somebody in the comments know. You gonna kill me? You gonna fucking kill me? Somebody gonna kill me? <laughs> um, the girl that used to date Diddy that 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 was with, with Diddy for a while. What Cassie? Cassie. Oh, okay. At the time, excuse me, Cassie. I'm so sorry, babe. I, I'm just thinking about a lot of shit. Um, Cassie at the time was dating Ryan Leslie. Cassie used to come over to the motherfucking house in Harlem all the time and record. Damn. No, seriously, dog. Like, 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 my life is so crazy, dog. I have seen so much shit that, like, it's just it was just normal conversation. But I remember the day that. I, this is funny. I remember the day that Cassie, that 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 Cassie and Diddy met. I remember that day. I remember because Ryan came home and told me that day. And this is funny as hell. He 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 told me that day that they spent with Diddy. <laughs> I don't know what happened in the motherfucking day because you know I did loving you no more. For Diddy, but I was working with this group that Diddy had called J Five. Mm. So I think they were called J Five at that time. And they went on and changed their names a couple times. This is a group he, this young group he was working with. But bottom line is, I used to work with Diddy a lot in in New York, um, um, and I was working with One Twelve at the time. Yeah, um, so I learned a lot from Diddy, right? Um, and I love Diddy for what he taught me, for how he helped me grow, right? Um, I'm the kind of person I stay positive. I stay positive. But anyway, let's get back to Cassie. Cassie at the time was working with Ryan Leslie when I was in Harlem. I love Harlem. Harlem, <laughs> yo, Harlem is a different vibe. It I is, like man. People. It is. It is a fucking vibe, though. Mm -hmm. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. Harlem, shout out Harlem. Harlem is a vibe. Yes, sir. Harlem is a motherfucking vibe. It's a different vibe. And that's what I love about, like, man, black people, dog. And I ain't mean to go and get on this whole black thing, but I'm just saying, like, you got if you're from Harlem, you got to come to Atlanta. You got to. It's a different type of soul food. But they got some good-ass soul food in Harlem. <laughs> we do. We definitely do. Y'all got some amazing soul food. Where'd you go? You went, where'd you go? Sylvia's? Yeah. What? Yo! And you know, shit, I don't even fuck, I'm gonna be honest, I don't even fuck with soul food, girl. <laughs> I, don't even, bro, I don't like soul food. I'm not a soul food nigga. I, I, I mean, I eat macaroni and cheese. I like, oh, I love special macaroni and cheese. I like, I like people who can really cook macaroni and cheese. My yeah. mama, listen, my mama was so Atlanta. My mama was so soul nigga. My mama was so soul. I just never been that kind of, I just never like heavy food. And it ain't got nothing to do with soul food. I just don't like heavy food. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I just don't I, don't, I don't really like heavy food. But my brother used to eat all my second helpings. <laughs> my, you know, but I was going to say, man, that Harlem was a very special place. Very it special is. place in my life. I learned a lot of very cool things from Harlem. And I saw how black people intermingled with each other because you know if you walk down 125th if you walk down some of these places in harlem dog you'll realize that black people really do get along they do get along not like life. they do down here in the south but they do to, to, for, for new yorkers yes for new yorkers because i new was, yorkers because i was getting to my point um j1 that you know um new yorkers are different people dog they some different people. And I was saying to my girlfriend, which was my point earlier, I was like, damn. I was like, damn, man. You come to Atlanta and you learn a different way of living when you're a New Yorker type of person. Or when you, and I mean, I, I just think that a lot of black people come to Atlanta and they be like, damn. You can really come down this motherfucker and really enjoy being black. You can. Because we don't deal with a whole bunch of goofy ass shit that a lot of people around the world deal with when it comes to being black. We don't deal with a whole bunch of that shit. The police down this motherfucker in Atlanta, the city, ain't finna do have that goofy ass shit they do in these other motherfucking cities. Right. 
Nigga, you ain't finna get away with that type shit. You know, none of the fuckery. Nah, none that's of true. The motherfucking fuckery, dog. It ain't none of that shit finna happen. I tell, I tell, I tell people all the time. Atlanta is one of those cities. If you come down here and you embrace the culture and you embrace the people, don't come down here on no no high horse or arrogant stuff. The city will love you. But if you come down on some, you oh, come I'm a, down I'm, with I'm a run. We gonna check you at the door. They, they gonna check you. It. Hey, like, they gonna look at you like Don't get it twisted. Want. It's Southern hospitality, but this is a very finessing city. Hey, <laughs> you saw how I got up on Dream Ass. Boy, I looked at him. <laughs> I said, "Hey, boy, look, guys, hey." <laughs> Well, what, there you go. That was that eye you gave him after you played them songs. <laughs> hey, boy, and, I, and, I, and you see how I switched shades on that motherfucker, boy? I, I, I took them goddamn regular Cartiers off and I put on them diamond ones. I let that nigga know it was real. But you know what? You know what, what disappoints me about Dream? And I ain't even going to get into him. But it just is disappointing that he feels like he needs somebody else to solidify who he is. Mm. That's what I don't like about him. And I ain't even gonna, I ain't, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna be, I ain't even gonna bite my tongue about it. I don't like that, man. Be your motherfucking self, for you. You know, my mom used to tell me, you better be, you better be your motherfucking self, for you be by yourself. Damn. I ain't, I don't like that. The, that nigga, but that nigga call it, it boy, that boy, shout out somebody else's name so quick. Man, be yourself, for you be by yourself. Why is you out here ratting off folks' names, boy? Why you got to do that? Be yourself. Be proud of you. Be what you bring to the game. Man. I'm so thankful, man. I'm so thankful for just being alive and being able to be blessed to be around certain people. But I'm not finna get on no. Pl I'm not finna get on no platform and get, and start uh, motherfucking endorsing motherfuckers to validate me. And then you compete with other people validating yourself. But see, this is a whole nother level of intelligence. This is a whole nother understanding of being yourself. Like, J1, I know you to be you. You've worked different places. But you haven't used other places to validate who you are, bro. You know what I'm saying? And that's, the, and, and that's you know what, you know what that is? That's a learning thing. I wasn't trying to be disrespectful. Mm -hmm. See, people took me wrong. Sometimes you gotta check a motherfucker on sight. If a nigga get out of pocket, nigga, check a nigga on sight. You ain't gotta argue with a nigga, nigga. Hey, 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 whoa, whoa. Hey, 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 my nigga. You gotta look <laughs> a nigga in their motherfucking eye sometimes, boy. You gotta, hey, I don't know if it's the shades, but I will take these motherfuckers off, cuz. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Jay? Boy, you gotta let a nigga know. And that nigga wasn't raised properly. He wasn't raised properly, dog. And then he got on the motherfuckers, he got on the vibe and started disres being disrespectful. He mm. check, that nigga, check that nigga on sight. Man, check that motherfucker on sight, dog. I ain't appreciate that shit at all, nigga. If you don't get your bitch ass together, nigga, don't you get on motherfucking nigga. Don't get on live being disrespectful to your damn self. Because you wasn't disrespecting me. You was disrespecting your damn self, boy. Mm. Boy, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, Campbellton Road. My mama from <laughs> you ever, nigga. And I had to say it to him just like that, J1. I saw it. I was so for real. I was so serious. Boy, I looked at that nigga in that camera. I know these folk, man. I was like, boy, hey, <laughs> dream, don't do that. Because you know, <laughs> there's a problem with life. There's a lot of things that people, that, that people pick up on. And you don't want to misinform people in life, dog. You want to teach kids, man, to be strong within themselves. Believe in yourself. Have a heart. Don't feel like you need somebody else to validate you, to be real, to be yourself. My mama taught me that early, J1. And I can't help it. Just, it, it leaks out of my it leaks out of my skin, dog. I, I just only know how to be myself and be strong. Be a be a strong person in your heart of you and what you believe in. Don't allow somebody to take you out your comfort zone to feel like you got to rely on another message. Mm. Mm. You That's understand? Deep. And I and I understand why I came across. I, I know I came across wrong to some people. It was cool. 
because I know they didn't understand. They didn't understand where I was at. They didn't understand where the temperament was coming from. You understand? But it's cool. I didn't expect for everybody to understand me then. As I start to elect to speak on what the fuck was necessary to speak on, it'll come out later. But it wasn't even necessary at that time. It was just necessary for him to get the message. So do you think moving forward that you guys could do like a, some sort of collaboration together? Because both of y'all are extremely talented, have played so on. many hits. They won. I go on tour with that nigga, cuz. Okay. Do you understand me? Yeah. I was going, boy, I go on tour with, with, with the dream. Boy, I love the dream, actually. I love the dream. A dream, dream just need to be educated. He not educated. Mm. You know, that nigga confused. Mm. Ain't no grudges. Right. And for any of y'all on this motherfucker thinking there's a grudge, there's no grudge. What? I've been Sean Gay. I've been popping way before dream. That's what y'all don't understand. Don't <laughs> let me, don't let me let you tour around this motherfucking room again. What y'all don't get is I've been popping. You niggas are just understanding what the fuck is going on. Did they not see Lil John and T Paint? Did you not get the difference last night? I'm at the piano. I'm at the piano. No. Don't get this shit confused. Did y'all motherfuckers not see what the fuck happened last night? Little John is a movie. Globally. Epic. Iconic. No disrespect to T-Pain. But I just, you know what? I'm and and let me say, Pain stuff. is amazing. Yeah. Pain is amazing. That, that little John nigga is, is he different. And, and T-Pain different too. So let me, let me put them both. I'm going to put them both. They, they both belong in the same category. They are astronomically some of the most creative, but fun people to be around ever. Yeah. I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that. I just like the fact, man, that, you know, we get to see successful African-American men compete in crafts that they've worked so hard on and do it for us as fans, as spectators, and, and just creating these moments. But, but, but here's the thing. We could, now, now let's just get real, though. Here's the difference between, I can tell you the difference between um, some moments and other moments. Yes, it like they were having an, a, an amazing time and having fun. I was having fun too. I don't want people to think that I was not having a good time. Right. I was really having a good time too. I just had to address it. It I was just it was just I was just having a moment. Yeah. Um, I was having a motherfucking moment. And you know what happens in life. But sometimes, man, you got to keep moving. <laughs> All I was got keep moving. Keep moving in your moment. Motherfucker made me mad as fuck. Nigga got disrespectful on site. Boy, I had to check that nigga and keep moving. Because at the end of the day, I ended the motherfucking moment. I ended it happy. I ended it happy. Sometimes in our black life, <laughs> sometimes in our <laughs> black life, motherfuckers is going to upset us. That nigga made me mad from the gate, cuz. I was mad as hell day one. Boy, when I got on that motherfucking live, boy, I was so mad. I, I was hot. <laughs> nigga had sent me a video. I can, this I can tell because the, the battle didn't start for like a good 15 minutes. I had it, man. I asked for 30 minutes. <laughs> so let me tell you something. I asked, listen, oh, God. I asked, I asked Swizzy. I said, Swizzy, can you give me 30 minutes? Bro, I was so mad. I had, I was trying to calm down. <laughs> I was so hot. Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth and Latter day Saints, dog. I control myself. It's not a grudge. I was just mad. You got to give a nigga room sometimes. Well, I was so hot. I couldn't. I was like, Jesus, I don't know how to do this. But I, but, but, it, but, it, but I ain't had no choice, man. It, they wanted me to go on J1, man. I had to go. You on. did it, though. You hey, did I, it. I it, it, look, it, and I got, it. It turned out epic. Y'all were the talk of the weekend. Jay, I know, and I want to apologize. I'm apologize to everybody. I'm apologize to even fucking on the dream. That nigga got me mad because that nigga made me mad as fuck. That nigga had me hot, boy. <laughs> God, Jesus, know me. 
I can't control myself, boy, sometimes when a nigga get out of pocket, boy, they'll be like, Jesus, now you know me. You got to hold me now. I can't handle myself. I cannot handle myself, boy. Oh, all I was just thinking, I was just seeing red. I couldn't help. I was seeing red, but I'm better now. You good now? I'm better. I'm better now. <laughs> I, was seeing, <laughs> I was seeing red. Boy, I couldn't even control myself. Boy, I was so hot. But, you know, God is good. He's a wonderful God. Thank you. Thank, thanks to you, nigga. Thank you. It's Sunday, 3.30. Four, what's 434? We've been on all day, boy. But listen, thank God for you, J1. Thank God for Pandora. Um, we don't have to end now, but I just want to thank, I want to do this before uh, anything ends. I want to thank you for everything that you have done for our culture, J1. You are, you are definitely a young, amazing star. Thank and you. I've called you a star. You know, I've called you a star before. I want you to understand why I say that. I, I see you, man. I see you out here, dog. You in the tree day. You know, seriously, man. Listen. I'm a lover first. I love people, boy. You a good person. You trying your best, man. And you fighting the storm. We all are fighting the storm, but you fight in a different way. You out here, man. You out here on a social level. Um, You out here promoting your own brand, but not. I just promote your own brand, bro. You out here trying. You out here for the people, and I noticed that about you when I first met you, dog. You for the people. You you ain't all, you know you you didn't come across as a nigga. You ain't come across as a New York guy, to be honest with you. Now. <laughs> I, ain't know you. I didn't know you was from. Um, I didn't know you. I didn't know you was from Harlem. Harlem. Well, like you said, man, Harlem's just a different vibe, and it's a it's a different breed of person, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, but and people get to know you, J One. As people get to know me, this is the beautiful thing about life. Our flowers will complete, continue to bloom. Our flowers will continue to bloom. And um, all we can do is be ourselves. That's all you've been. Um, shout out to my man, World, too. I just uh, I just seen he popped up on, on live. Uh, who else am I out? Jacquees. Shout out to Jacquees. Hey. Shout out um, to Jonathan, too, man. Yes. Jonathan, yeah. that, that's another solid brother right there. Jonathan is a solid individual. Mm -hmm. Jonathan goes so hard for uh, Jacquees. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know if you're listening. Shout out to my girl, someone, too. Uh, Jacquees, Jonathan is a good one. Yes, sir. Keep him around. Keep him around. Keep him around. <laughs> hey, man, Jonathan be fighting them battles, boy. He definitely he, do. He be fighting them battles, man. And shout out to Jonathan, man. Uh, the fact that you, I was, I just did an interview with uh, Forbes mm. uh, the day before yesterday, and um, one of the young ladies.